Hi, welcome to my personal oral hygiene video. If you've come here from the toothbrushing instructional video, thank you for making it this far. Welcome back, my do's and do-dums. Well, perhaps the best thing would be to go over some of the more frequently asked questions I get, as well as my daily oral hygiene habit. For those who have watched the brushing instructional video, link here in case you haven't, surely the question most burning in your minds is, what song should I listen to when brushing my teeth? My personal song of choice at the time of making this video, with the length of 3 minutes and 19 seconds, is Pressure and Time by Rival Sons. Rock and roll. As an advocate of interdental brushes, a frequently asked question I get is, what size should I use? Well, would the gums fill the teeth nicely, forming a pink triangle, that is, where the interdental papilla are still intact, without a visible gap or a black triangle between the teeth, dental floss may be a better choice. The same is true for overlapping teeth. That said, the majority of adult dentition will have some form of interdental gaps of varying sizes, and while floss and interdental brushes are both useful tools in removing the plaque therein, I personally prefer interdental brushes for their ability to reach the interdental spaces and concavities. However, both may cause injuries to our gums if not used properly, as varying interdental gap sizes will necessitate various interdental brush sizes. I would recommend buying a starter pack first. Here is an example to see which sizes best suit your interdental gaps. I personally have three different sizes, which I use before brushing my teeth, dipped in toothpaste each time. Interdental brushes should be applied with a gentle force, adequately filling the gap they are meant to clean, and should be inserted, withdrawn, two, maximum three times. Now, tooth brushing. Using the modified bass technique, before finishing the remaining tooth surfaces, I prefer to begin at the molar region of the upper arch on the right hand side on the outer surfaces of my teeth, working my way over to the left hand side before switching to the inner surfaces of my teeth, continuing at the back but this time moving from the left to the right hand side. The same is then done on the lower arch. For those of you wondering what the modified bass technique is, please click the link to my video here. I use a rotating, oscillating, rotating toothbrush with dense, soft bristles. Here are a few examples of what they may look like. However, I do also keep a manual toothbrush with a high, soft bristle density count as well in the case of travel or an electric toothbrush malfunction. To avoid exerting too much pressure on my teeth while brushing, I hold my toothbrush in a loose as opposed to a fisted grip, allowing for better tactile that is pressure control. I personally brush twice a day, once in the morning after waking up to remove the overnight bacterial growth which causes our lovely morning breath, resetting my oral hygiene, and once at night before going to bed, after which no food or sugary drinks are consumed. Which brings us to toothpaste, mouthwash, and chewing gum. Some of you may be like, wait, what? Surely as a dentist, he should be advocating brushing at least three, if not four times a day. While brushing after meals is, of course, good practice, I needed to be pragmatic in creating an oral hygiene schedule that work best with my daily routine. Since I usually drink two lattes each day, one throughout the morning and the other at lunch, my oral pH drops to a critical, that is a demineralization level, during these times. 
As I regularly drink my morning coffee between patients, my oral pH is frequently acidic, similar though perhaps not as severely as regular snacking or drinking sugary drinks, which is why desserts and sweets should be consumed at mealtimes to avoid such repeated drops to our oral pH in between meals. Since I am exposed to frequent drops in my oral pH, however, which is bad for my tooth enamel, I frequently chew sugar-free gum in order to mitigate this. The chewing action stimulates salivary flow, increasing its rinsing effect, thereby increasing the salivary clearance of the substrates in my mouth. This means less food for the acid-producing oral bacteria to feed on. Additionally, saliva has a buffer capacity which neutralizes the oral acids. I am by no means advocating for gum chewing in favor of toothbrushing. However, since my lunch frequently takes the form of a coffee, I find that brushing my teeth twice a day, as mentioned previously, whilst managing my oral pH through gum chewing stimulated salivary flow works best for me. If you do brush your teeth after a meal, be mindful that our saliva requires around 20 minutes to bring our acid softened enamel to a point where it is no longer demineralizing. Therefore, it is best to wait at least 20 minutes after eating before brushing your teeth to avoid damaging your tooth enamel. So, what about toothpaste and mouthwash? My general rule of thumb regarding toothpaste is that it should contain the appropriate fluoride concentration amount and that it shouldn't be geared specifically towards tooth whitening. Why is this? Well, fluoride not only facilitates the rate of remineralization, but when it replaces the hydroxyl ion in our enamel hydroxyapatite, hydroxyapatite being the name of our enamel crystalline structure, it forms fluorapatite, which is less soluble and therefore more resistant to demineralization. As for tooth whitening specific toothpastes, many of them contain increased amounts of abrasive particles, which may be harmful to our enamel as we brush our teeth. While most mainstream toothpastes have hydrated silica as a general component used as a mild abrasive for cleaning, whitening specific toothpastes may have a higher concentration of hydrated silica with additional silica silicate or carbonate bicarbonate components added to their ingredient list. Additional components such as foaming agents, fragrances, or flavorings may act as irritants, in which case you should consult with your dentist. So, what concentration of fluoride should we be using? Adults should be brushing at least twice daily, between three to four minutes each time, with a toothpaste containing between 1,350 to 1,500 ppm fluoride. However, as most children's toothpaste is formulated to be tasty, in order to appeal to children, many younger children have a tendency to swallow this, which is why children's toothpaste typically contains around 1,000 ppm fluoride. Children less than three years of age should brush twice daily with a smear, that is roughly a grain of rice size, fluoridated toothpaste, while children between the ages of three and six should brush at least twice daily with a pea-sized amount of fluoridated toothpaste to avoid the risk of fluorosis. Children six years and older, that is during the period of mixed dentition, may already use adult toothpaste. However, parents then need to ensure that they are spitting out the toothpaste in order to avoid potential enamel fluorosis of their permanent teeth. When done brushing, adults and children alike, the toothpaste should simply be spat out with perhaps just a sip of water used to rinse our mouths. Otherwise, the film from the toothpaste will be washed away reducing the effectiveness of the fluoride, which would otherwise last between one to two hours after brushing our teeth. Rinsing with fluoride-containing mouthwash extends the fluoride effect two to three hours after its use. However, only after the mechanical removal of plaque has occurred, that is after brushing, which is why we use mouthwash as a supplement to and not a substitute for toothbrushing. I personally recommend mouthwash without any alcohol in it, as it may act 
as a general oral irritant, and in the case of alcoholism or heavy smoking, may act as an exacerbating oral irritant. Specialized mouthwashes, such as chlorhexidine-containing mouthwashes for elevated bacterial control, should be discussed with your dentist as prolonged use may impact taste sensation and may cause tooth discoloration. And since a small amount of dental calculus will invariably form within the nooks and crannies of our teeth over time, even in the case of immaculate oral hygiene, not to mention the staining effects coffee has on our teeth, I typically attend a professional stain and calculus removal session every four months or so and have a general checkup done since I'm already at the dentist's. Well, that's how I take care of my teeth. Hopefully it was insightful and maybe even provided you with a tip or two. If you like this video or are interested in future videos, you know which buttons to click below. All video ideas are also welcome in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you dent, do dent.